We have seen the double dot product. To proceed in that direction, we have little bit going back and looking at an interesting relationship. Sigma dash ij is equal to 2g multiplied by epsilon dash ij. This dash indicates the deviatoric stress here and this dash indicates the deviatoric strain. In other words, the deviatoric stress in any direction is proportional to the deviatoric strain in that particular direction. For example, I can write here sigma dash ij is proportional to by avoiding 2g, I just write proportional to epsilon dash ij. Now, we are going to prove it first, how it is coming. Recall the Hooke's law of triaxial stress regime and this is what we have done already. Here the Kronecker delta, delta ij term is involved. What is the elaborate form of this? If we recollect, it looks like this. The epsilon ij is a 3 into 3 matrix, 1 by e is over here, 1 plus nu over here, sigma ij is a 3 into 3 matrix minus nu, then sigma ij, sigma kk. Actually, if you simplify, it will be 3 will come out and this is sigma bar. Sigma bar is the mean stress which is sigma 1 or rather this plus this plus this divided by 3. Okay. Now let us see the proof, this is the relation which has already been established and here multiply both side by delta ij, the Kronecker delta is multiplied in both side. This is quite possible because if i is equal to j, I am multiplying at both side by 1 and if i is not equal to j, I am multiplying both sides by 0. So this is logical. Now if we look into it, it basically simplifies to epsilon kk from here comes out. How? say i is not equal to j. In that case, this first uh, epsilon 1, 2, epsilon 2, 3, epsilon 3, 1, all such terms will become 0. As i equal to j, in that case, say I take i equal to j equal to 2, in that case I have to write epsilon kk, that means epsilon 3, 3. Now 1 divided by e, 1 plus nu, if i equal to j, then it is sigma 1, 1. And if i equal to j here, then this becomes 1 minus nu and then sigma kk. If i and j are 1, then k has to be taken as 3. So this becomes sigma 3, 3. In this way, for i equal to j, I have explained. If i not equal to j, then also this will come out. As the general expression, three equations are hidden within it. Now again multiply both sides by sig uh, the Kronecker delta ij divided by 3. Once this is being done, this basically leads to the mean strain over here. Again look at it, if i is equal to j then it is epsilon 3 3, if 1 and j equal to 2 then the term vanishes. So in this way by Einstein summation we find out epsilon kk sum divided by 3 and here 1 minus 2 nu by e and then sigma kk. If i and j are equal to 1 then sigma 3 3 will come out. And if i equal to j, this term becomes 1. If i not equal to j, this entire thing becomes 0. So we can see that basically we have got the mean strain has come out in this way. Epsilon kk sum divided by 3 equal to 1 minus 2 nu by e sum sigma kk by 3. Now this sigma kk by 3 is basically sum of its and divided by 3 is basically the mean stress. So here we have got the mean strain and here we have got the mean stress. So we can write the mean strain epsilon m is equal to 1 minus 2 nu by e over there and equal to the mean stress. So from here we can easily say that the mean stress is proportional to the mean strain. Now from this relation, this one is taken. This is the mean value, this is the mean strain at this side and the mean stress at that side. Now this is the total strain for 9 components is the total stress is involved over here. If I subtract like total strain minus the mean strain, it will give us the deviatoric strain and that has been done. Subtract 2 from 1, then epsilon ij is kept over there minus the deviatoric component is here that is put there. 
So the total strain in 9 component and minus the mean strain will give us the dibiotic strain component. So this is basically our dibiotic strain which can be obtained in 9 directions and which will be equal to this term which is the total stress related term and this is the term involving the mean stress. So if that subtraction is made it can be simplified it comes over here and from there we can say that epsilon dash ij which is this term is equal to 1 plus nu divided by e sigma dash ij and I can write 1 plus nu by e as 1 divided by 2g. So from there we can write sigma dash ij is equal to 2g multiplied by epsilon dash ij. So we not only got epsilon m is proportional to sigma m or sigma m is proportional to epsilon m, we also found out that sigma dash is proportional to epsilon dash and if the all the components are involved ij and ij are put over there. Now from here we will move into the von mistress where the double dot product and this important concept will be absolutely useful. Now with adequate background we are going to see the definition of the von mistress and to do this we have to start with the strain energy density W and it was already discussed. W has two components out of this I can take this one to initiate. I am not defining von mistress right now. First we will go ahead and at one point we, will going to, we are going to define. Consider this is W dash and W dash is a dibiotic component of W. Why? Because this is the dibiotic stress, this is the dibiotic strain and this is a, that is the double dot product. Take this W dash over here, W dash is equal to 0 0.5 and then multiplied by the double dot product between the dibiotic stress and the dibiotic strain. Also from Hooke's law, we have demonstrated that epsilon dash that means the dibiotic strain is equal to 0 0.5 multiplied by g inverse multiplied by sigma dash. Sigma is the dibiotic stress. Now these two can be combined. What that means? This epsilon dash value will be substituted over there. So what it becomes? 0 0.25 g inverse okay, and then sigma dash double dot product with sigma dash. The dibiotic stress in itself will be made a double product. Now consider a representative stress sigma representative as the square root of sigma dash double dot product sigma dash. Now further consider a uniaxial tension that means along only one direction the stress is applied and in all other directions stresses are 0, all 0. So why this is done? Because actually the von Mies stress will be defined for the uniaxial tension or compression if required. So in this case we can find out the mean stress as sigma divided by 3 because sigma plus 0 plus 0 divided by 3. So the dibiotic stress matrix will be given by sigma minus sigma by 3 equal to 2 sigma by 3 these remain as zeros and this is minus sigma by 3 and that is minus sigma by 3. So this represents the dibiotic stress matrix. Now if I do sigma dash double dot product sigma dash what will happen? These terms will be squared and added up and once that is done we find it comes out to be 2 sigma square divided by 3. What is this sigma value? This is this sigma value we are talking. Note this is a bold sigma and this is the unbold sigma. Now from here what we understand is that sigma representative is equal to 2 sigma square divided by 3. So which means sigma representative is equal to root 2 by 3 multiplied by sigma. This magnitude square root of 2 by 3 is 0.82. So it is said that sigma representative is 82% of this sigma. 
Now this sigma representative can be scaled up. What does that mean? If I multiply sigma representative by root 3 by 2, what will happen? I will get the sigma value. So this is an important relation where we have stopped. What does this mean? Sigma representative can be scaled up. We will see very soon. Now with this information, we can come to the uniaxial stress case. The von stress sigma Vm is given by square root of 3 divided by 2 then the double dot product between the sigma dash and the sigma dash itself. So and since it has been scaled up and now I can explain that by doing this multiplication and defining in this way we are getting the sigma vm is equal to the applied sigma. Imagine a situation where the divitrotic stresses are known for uniaxial tension and from there I want to go back to the applied stress sigma in that case this formula will work. So here the input is the divitrotic stress. We will now see what, what happens if this is expanded. Just an algebra but I will demonstrate. The divitrotic stress is given by this when there is a uniaxial tension being considered. Now my request to the student is that use this sigma dash and put it here. Do a double dot product and then expand it and see how the things look like. This is your exercise. Then the second thing is consider a triaxial stress regime where sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3 are the non-zero stresses. So the divitrotic stress is given by sigma dash equal to that. And I have the same question here. The sigma vm will look like what? I mean put this in the expression and expand. And as a subset of this exercise is that after being expanded take some special case that along one direction the normal stress is 0 and at other two directions suppose it is working and the shear stresses are also 0 in specific uh, directions in that case how the sigma vm will look like. We have seen in case of a uniaxial stress regime extensional one given by this matrix sigma 0 0 0 0 0 and 0 0 0 sigma vm is given by square root of 3 by 2 sigma dash double dot product with sigma dash. Sigma dash indicates the divitrotic stress. Now just like this formula another formula can come for the effective strain and it is given by epsilon effective is equal to square root of 2 divided by 3 epsilon double dot product epsilon dash double dot product epsilon dash. We have to understand what it means. First of all, once we are calling effective strain, immediately in our mind comes, do we have any term like effective stress? And I have already discussed it. And you will see that the effective stress in the way we have talked and the effective strain that we are talking here are different. What is effective stress? Imagine on a body, a compressional stress sigma is applied in a single direction. Now if there is a pore pressure available, then the pore pressure counteracts with it. So sigma minus alpha multiplied by PP is the pore pressure. Alpha is a constant which is less than or equal to 1. So this has been called as, as the effective stress that works on the body. So as you see this kind of definition and clearly from this writing the effective strain are completely different. In case of effective strain what happens here we are putting the divitrotic strain terms their double dot product is done and then multiplied by two third make a square root then we pick up the epsilon effective value. Now let us try to understand why is the difference even 3 by 2 and 2 by 3. Why it is happening and from where 2 by 3 is coming let us understand. Consider again the uniaxial stress regime and in that case what happens sigma 1 1 or sigma here will produce a strain along epsilon 1 1 and that is epsilon. Now along sigma 2 2 and sigma 3 3 there are zero stresses acting but along those directions two other normal strains will be produced which is equal to minus epsilon by 2 which has already been proved. So in this case whereas you are observing we started for we found out the sigma dash from such a matrix. Here epsilon dash or the divitrotic strain can be obtained from such a matrix. Clearly the two matrices are different therefore the final outcome 
here it was 3 by 2 scaling up was done and here it is 2 by 3 scaling up has happened. So now my request to the students find out epsilon dash as a matrix 3 into 3 matrix divisorial strain 1 then you do a double dot product what does that mean the term here here and here in this diagonal are to be squared and basically to be added up once that is being done then multiply it by 2 third and make a square root and check are you getting the epsilon effective is equal to epsilon if you are getting why it is so and if you are not getting why it is so then you have to explain it now i am giving you a problem consider nu equal to 0.3 e is equal to 12 mega pascal and the stress system is like this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 all in the mega pascal unit now here a sequence of things to be done by you find out sigma bar the mean stress find out the divisorial stress as a tensor this one also is a tensor and then using the given sigma sigma bar e which is given to you 12 mega pascal and nu which is given to you as 0.3 find out the epsilon and the g epsilon will come out as a 3 into 3 matrix then find out again do it like from this given stress 3 into 3 matrix here you subtract what to do the mean stress what you will get you will get sigma dash as a 3 into 3 matrix it must be done so that we develop some fluency and finally you show that sigma dash ij is equal to 2g multiplied by epsilon dash ij which was already proved and now with the numbers we have to go through the same process we are now going to see a very important thing in the rock mechanics or solid mechanics studies and the same thing is also found in fluid mechanics as well. Consider there are three perpendicular axes, I have drawn them but I have not written which one is x, which one is y and which one is z. Now consider there are two points, one over here, another over there. This point can be represented by the vector x which can have the values x1, y1, z1 if we think like that. So that point can be characterized by this vector x. This distance is a very small distance d capital X and it can have its position vector. Now think of some deformation in the solid or in the rocks or if it is a fluid mechanics you are thinking fluid is flowing and the points have moved these two points have moved say this point has come over here and this point has come over there. So after the movements have happened this capital X vector which was representing this point now this point has come over here small x can be used as a vector to represent it and this point which was earlier here has come over there let us call it point P. Now we can define the displacement function ux and ux plus dx so that this blue line can be, can be called as the displacement function ux plus dx and this line from here to there from the displacement that has happened can be called as the ux. Now, this is a small distance d capital X and this is a small distance d small x. We will look at a vector relationship capital X plus ux is equal to small x. This is the capital X plus ux is equal to small x within this triangle. This triangular relationship can be established. I am going from here to here and then from here to here. In other words, I can straightway travel from here to there. So capital X plus U capital X is equal to X can be written. And from here we can write small x minus capital X is equal to UX and it will be useful in future. We want to look at the OP vector OP. This can be written like if I want to travel from O to P, alternately I can travel from here to there, here to there 
there to there that is what has been done. O p is given by x plus d x this is capital X plus cap d capital X and then the displacement vector u x plus d x that has been stated. Now, going in such a complicated manner from O to P can also be simplified if I move from here to there and there to there which is small x plus d x small x plus d x. So, these two will be equated that has been done I am writing small x plus d small x here is equal to this expression is written over there. Now, next this x is taken at that side of the equation that is what I am writing minus x and here was a plus x. So, that has become minus minus x. Now, again we can recollect this relation which was described first that the displacement function u capital X is equal to small x minus capital X. So, therefore, this x minus x is replaced by u capital X and that has been done. So, what do we get? d small x is equal to d capital X plus u capital X plus d x minus u capital X. Now, this portion can be written in a different way. We can write it and you can follow from this equation towards here d small x is equal to d capital X plus nabla u d x. Now, here we need to understand what is the meaning of this nabla. Nabla operator is given by this del del x 1 del del x 2 del del x 3. So, once this is a nabla operator we can put x and then tensor product of the nabla operator which means this will be transposed that has happened. These are the capital X values capital X 1 capital X 2 and capital X 3 and once this matrix multiplication is done we get into this form del small x 1 del capital X 1 del small x 1 del capital X 2 del cap small x 1 del capital X 3 and the rest you can read by your own. So, what is common in the first row is that in the numerator del x 1 is common and the denominator this is x 1 x 2 and x 3. Now, you can look at the second row and the third row and accordingly you can understand and remember. This can be represented as del x i del x j in the Einstein summation symbol and this matrix has been called as a Jacobian matrix can be represented either as f or as f i j. This has been called as the deformation gradient or the gradient of the position function. Now, we were here d x is equal to d x plus nabla u d capital X and from here we can take d x common and take it outside. Here is i is the identity matrix we are dealing with 3 into 3 matrix. So, it is 1 0 0 0 1 0 and 0 0 1. So, from here we can write d small x divided by d capital X is equal to f is again we are as we call as a deformation gradient is equal to i plus nabla u and the expression I have written over there this entire expression I have written over there. Now, let us look at the equations once again the basic things u plus capital X is equal to small x vector wise y we can see here this is capital X and then I am adding u will give to rise to small x. So, here instead of u x we are writing as u I repeat x plus u is equal to small x that is what has been written. Now, comes del u 1 del capital X 1 plus del capital X 1 del capital X 1 equal to del small x 1 del capital X 1. So, here what happens this term becomes equal to 1. So, similarly the other two terms can also be stated in this way here will be plus 1. Now, let us understand in detail this x 1 x 2 x 3 and capital x 1 capital x 2 capital x 3 those were nowhere stated x 1 x 2 x 3 was not there. So, 
imagine in these three perpendicular axes we define one of them as axis 1, another as axis 2, another and the third one as the axis 3. Then this capital X can be resolved along those axes as capital X1, capital X2 and capital X3. Likewise, this small x can be resolved along the three axes as small x1, small x2 and small x3. These x1, x2, x3s are represented over here. When we apply the deformation gradient in our studies, it will be very fast.